from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Thursday, March the 9th, 2023. U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin arrived in Israel today. He was greeted at Ben-Gurion Airport by his Israeli counterpart, Yoav Gallant. In speaking to the press at Ben-Gurion, Austin shared his concern about the situation in the West Bank, including Jewish extremist attacks against Palestinians. He also called on Palestinian leadership to combat terrorism against Israel. Austin spoke of the controversial judicial reforms by the Israeli government, saying in broad terms that a broad consensus must be achieved for fundamental changes in the judicial system in order for them to remain sustainable. Austin met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu at Ben-Gurion for a meeting with other officials as well on several priority topics, some of which the two noted to the press before the sit-down, where Austin also reiterated the U.S. firm commitment to Israel's security. We have a common agenda to prevent Iran from uh, acquiring nuclear weapons and preventing Iran's aggression, maintaining the security and prosperity of this region, and seeking to expand the circle of peace. We do have a lot to talk about uh, today, uh, uh, and you've heard us say uh, over and over again uh, that we are absolutely committed to security of Israel. The meetings were held at the airport, reportedly because of the mass protests taking place today across Israel, in particular in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. Soon after meeting Austin, Netanyahu departed for Rome to meet its prime minister, Georgia Maloney. The protesters also gathered along the route to Ben-Gurion, including the Ayalon Highway, to try and stop or at least delay Netanyahu's trip. Netanyahu had flown from Jerusalem via helicopter to the airport earlier today in order to avoid the blocked highways. Fifteen protesters were detained in Tel Aviv for blocking the Ayalon, with police physically clearing crowds out of the way. And while police brought a water cannon to the site, they did not use it. Eight people were arrested in Jerusalem. All but one have since been released. In his remarks to reporters before leaving for Rome, the prime minister addressed the conflict over the judicial reforms. He said, all of our efforts at dialogue have been met with total refusal from the opposition, claiming they were trying to drag the country into anarchy. We won't let anyone disrupt Israel's democracy, he said, and cancel the decision of the majority in Israel, as expressed in the recent elections. Opposition leader and former Prime Minister Yair Lapid responded, accusing Netanyahu of lying. He tweeted the government did not agree to any attempt at negotiation and continues to push through the legislation that will turn us into a messianic, extremist, and undemocratic state. The only anarchists, Lapid said, in this story are government ministers trying to set the country on fire. Israel's President Isaac Herzog addressed the people of Israel tonight, calling the current situation a disaster. The president was clearly emotional, saying he could no longer bear to see the country being torn apart, saying that compromise was near, and vowing, I will not give up, I will pay any price to find a solution. Herzog said of the judicial reforms, the current legislation advancing through the Knesset needs to be discarded now and forever, saying the legislation is wrong and endangers our democratic foundations. They must be replaced immediately with a different agreed-upon plan and called on Israel's leaders to take action before the country reaches a point of no return saying the choice and the responsibility was theirs. And Israel's leaders, its coalition and opposition, had to choose between a son or pitaron, calamity or solution. And late-breaking news to report to you about tonight. The Times of Israel said three people were shot and wounded in a terror attack in Tel Aviv. The terrorist opened fire at people sitting outside a cafe on the corner of Dizengoff Street and Ben-Gurion Street and then fled the scene with police officers in pursuit. Police shot and killed the terrorist in a shootout shortly after. He was later identified as a member of terror group Hamas. 
One victim was listed in critical condition. Two were listed in serious to moderate condition. We will have more for you on this incident tomorrow, Friday. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Thursday, March the 9th. At 7 o'clock, it's Talmud Study. At 7.30, a look at the rabbinic idea of law. At 8, Jonathan Tobin speaks with Bethany Mandel and Carol Markowitz on Top Story. At 9, Andrew Rayfeld is on L'Chaim. At 10.30, a look at the film Cinema Sabaya on Jewish Cinematheque. And coming up next, it's the ILTV's Insider. Well, we end our news tonight with the passing of legendary Jewish-Israeli Oscar-nominated actor Chaim Topol today in Tel Aviv after a long battle with Alzheimer's at the age of 87. Topol, as he was referred to, was most known and beloved for his iconic portrayal of Tevya in Fiddler on the Roof, a role he played over 3,500 times on stage and, of course, left his indelible and forever mark in the film version of the show. Topol was born in Tel Aviv in 1935. He served in the IDF's entertainment unit and started doing theater upon his completion of service. In 1964, he was cast in the title role of Salah Shabbati, which put him in the spotlight internationally. And in 1971 came the film adaptation of Fiddler, for which he won a Golden Globe Award and was nominated for an Oscar. Tuppel was also a writer, illustrator, and philanthropist. He founded the Variety Israel Nonprofit, which provides treatment and support to children with special needs, and served as president of the Jordan River Village, which helps children living with chronic illnesses and disabilities. Topol won the Israel Prize for Lifetime Achievement in 2015. Netanyahu called Topol one of the State of Israel's greatest artists. President Herzog called him one of the giants of Israeli culture. Israel's official Twitter wrote, To many of you, he was Tevya. To us, Chaim Topol was a national treasure, a cultural icon, and above all, a human being who loved his country. Today, we celebrate his life and legacy from Tel Aviv to Anatevka. Referring to the shtetl in Fiddler on the Roof, so we will end our tribute here as well on a celebratory note with a clip of Tevya Topol in that most iconic role. All day long I pity, pity, bum If I were a wealthy man I you wouldn't have to work hard Yabby, dibby, 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 dum Lord, who made the lion and the lamb You decreed I should be what I am Would it spoil some vast eternal plan? If I were a wealthy man